Today's topic is 6.3, adding and subtracting rational expressions. That's on pages 331 to 340 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is to expand and demonstrate understanding of rational expressions and equations up to and including degree two numerators and denominators, including equivalent forms of expressions, operations on expressions, and solving equations that can be simplified to linear or quadratic equations. And our lesson objectives today are to be able to add and subtract rational expressions the same way you would regular fractions. So remember that in order to add or subtract fractions, you always need a common denominator. And then you, when you add or subtract fractions, you add or subtract the numerators, but you leave the common denominator the same. These things are going to be the same when we're dealing with rational expressions. And make sure you, to double check your final answer to see if you can simplify it any further. So what we've got here is 10m minus 1 minus 8m minus 2m, and both these have the same denominator of 4m minus 3. So we could write it like this. Now I'm writing it with the brackets to show you that you have to be careful when you're subtracting because you're going to change the sign on both these terms in the second fraction. So we actually get 10m minus 1 minus 8 plus 2m all over 4m minus 3. We can combine like terms in the top. That's 12m minus 9 over 4m minus 3. And at this point we should also make sure to state our non-permissible values. So we know that 4m minus 3 can't equal 0. So that means that m cannot equal 3 quarters. And we've done the math on this sort of thing before. We move the 3 over, it becomes positive, we divide by 4. So now we want to make sure to see if we can simplify this thing any further. We can take out a greatest common factor here of 3 out of the top, and we get 4m minus 3. And we also have 4m minus 3 in the bottom, so those two things cancel out. So we are left with just an answer of plain old 3. Now it's not always going to work out that way, but you always want to make sure to double check your final answer to see if it does work out that way. Our second example here is x minus 1 divided by x squared plus, 6 minus x, plus x minus 6, sorry, minus x minus 2 all over x squared plus 4x plus 3. Now, to find a common denominator, we're going to want to factor the bottoms first. So make sure you always factor the bottoms first. So I, I can just use regular old inspection to factor those things. So I'm looking for two things that multiply to negative 6 but add to positive 1. And that would be x plus 3 and x minus 2. And over here I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to factor two things that multiply to 3 and add to 4. Well, that's going to be x plus 3 and x plus 1. Now, to find a common denominator, I have to check to see if there's anything common to begin with. And there is. There is um, the x plus 3 is common here and the x plus 3 is common there. But this one has an x minus 2 and this one has an x plus 1. So what we're going to do is multiply this first fraction by x plus 1. And I'm going to do that to the top and the bottom just like you would with regular fractions. And I'm going to multiply this one by x minus 2. Remember by multiplying and, and dividing by the same thing, I'm essentially multiplying by 1, so I'm not really changing this expression whatsoever. So now I have x plus 1 and x minus 1. When I multiply those together, I get x squared minus 1. And I'm going to subtract whatever I get when I get x minus 2 multiplied by x minus 2, and that is x squared minus 4x plus 4. Now, I have the same denominator, so I might as well just write it all over top the same denominator right off the bat. x plus 1, x plus 3, and x minus 2. And now I'm going to distribute this negative sign inside, so I get negative x squared, I get positive 4x, and I get negative 4. And that's all over x plus 1, x plus 3, and x minus 2. And now I can combine like terms, I get x squared minus x squared, or those just cancel each other off. So I end up with 4x minus 5 on the top, and x plus 1, x plus 3, and x minus 2 on the bottom. I have forgotten to state my non-permissible values, so I can save them now. Um, up to this step, I know that I can't have a, a negative 3 because of x plus 3. I can't have a positive 2 because of x minus 2, and I can't have a negative 1. And I check to see if I can cancel out any other common um, factors in the top and the bottom of this expression, and I can't because that's 4x minus 5. And so I leave it as is, and this is the, the combined version, or if you were to subtract these two fractions. So you have to just remember a few things. The rules for fractions remain the same. Find a common denominator, 
and you want to um, factor them first if they if they can be factored so you can see what you have to multiply by and not in every case will you have a common factor but in this case we did and then just remember to multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing in order to basically multiply it by one so in summary you need a common denominator in order to add or subtract fractions this is no different when you're dealing with rational expressions you need to find that common denominator Make sure that you're careful when subtracting rational expressions. The negative sign needs to be applied to all the terms of the numerator. And when you're finding that common denominator, remember that you want to factor the denominators first and see if there's anything common. So your assignment is on pages 336 to 340. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.